Hi, good day, everyone. Thank you for attending today's webinar on a quick organoid viability measurement by using Cyto 3D Live Dead Assay Kit. I'm introduce myself. I am Christopher Oak from the Well of Bioscience, and I will be your moderator. Alongside our speaker for today, Dr. Kahaler Manik Devella from the Well of Bioscience. A few housekeeping. Uh, during this webinar, you can utilize the Q&A tab on your left side for any questions you have. We will collect and present them during the Q&A session. We will also have some quick poll segments during the webinar. Feel free to participate as we go along. Also, the webinar will be recorded and can be accessed later for your convenience. So let's get started. I would like to introduce Dr. Kahala Manek Devella from the Well Bioscience. Dr. Kahar earned his doctorate from the Texas Tech University, where he investigated the mechanisms linking adipose renin angiotensin system to inflammation and endoplasmic rectum stress. This postdoctoral research at Rutgers University, where he explored the novel role of intestinal fatty acid binding proteins in regulating glucose metabolism and energy hemostasis through specific ligand binding using numerous models, including 3D organoids. Now he's currently at the Well Bioscience as a research scientist to overseeing the 3D organoid model unit, primarily focusing on developing and refining various vitro gel hydrogel systems to support organoid cultures. Now I'm going to turn it over to our speaker, Dr. Ahala Manekdavela. Please welcome him. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Christopher, for the introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone, uh, and uh, thank you for joining the webinar. So today I'll be uh, discussing uh, how Cyto3D uh, Live Data Assay Kit uh, can be used to perform a quick uh, viability measurement in uh, 3D organic cultures. And also I will discuss some other applications as well as some benefits of uh, Cyto3D Live Data Assay Kit in the latter part of uh, today's uh, webinar. First of all, I would like to uh, pay your attention on the key takeaways uh, of today's webinar. Uh, so here at the Bell Bioscience, uh, we specifically develop Cyto3D Live Dead Assay Kit to label live and dead cells in 3D tissue structures like uh, organoids and spheroids. Uh, and also this kit can be used to overcome many limitations associated with other uh, commercially available kits. And it creates a uniform staining uh, without uh, background signal, which will produce uh, much cleaner and better images. And also Cyto3D Live Dead Assay Kit uh, is a fast uh, one-step uh, uh, staining procedure. And uh, this versatile kit has a wide range of uh, applications, both in 3D as well as 2D, which I will discuss in the uh, upcoming slide. Saying that, uh, start off with uh, organoids. Uh, organoids are three-dimensional, tiny self-organized tissue structures. And more importantly, they mimic both functional as well as structural features of organ. Uh, and if you look at this uh, graph here, this shows uh, a number of publications uh, related to organoid culture over 20 years time. And we can clearly see that that number has increased significantly uh, over past few years. Now, the main reason is uh, when compared to uh, traditional 2D monolayer cultures, these 3D organic cultures are becoming increasingly popular among research communities, mainly due to the physiological similarities of these 3D structures to the intact organ. So not just that, uh, the data produced using these 3D organoids uh, are very comparable with what we really see in uh, living organisms. So these are some of the reasons why it is getting popular. And today we have several very well established organoid models uh, from different tissues and organ. I have listed uh, here a few, intestine, liver, brain, kidney, etc. cetera. Um, so due to these uh, beneficial features, as well as advancements in research, organoid cultures are kind of can be considered as a preferred model for in-depth biological studies. And they have many advanced uh, applications, as you can see here. And uh, uh, it is ideal for disease modeling and also very popular among research communities who conduct uh, drug discovery and co-culture related experiments. Now in this uh, video, this is something that we carried out here uh, at the Well Bioscience. Uh, uh, we tested the interaction of dendritic cells with uh, human gastric uh, uh, organoids. 
And similar to this, uh, much advanced research can be conducted using uh, these uh, 3D uh, organoids. Now, it is true that the culture technique as well as the culture materials, 3D culture materials, they have tremendously improved over the past few years. Uh, however, uh, some areas like cell, cell viability testing, more specifically cell viability in uh, 3D structures like organoid, uh, require further improvements. So cell viability can be simply defined as uh, the ability of cells to survive and perform their intended functions uh, in a given environment. So whether you are performing 2D, 3D, advanced dis uh, drug discovery studies, or maybe you are doing some very basic uh, culture condition testing, uh, the health of uh, the health of the cells that you are using uh, will definitely decide the final outcome and the success of your experiment. So that is why it is important to understand whether the cells are alive or dead, which would provide primary but uh, critical information about your final outcome. So how do you uh, uh, check uh, or measure cell viability? Uh, there are several commercially available kits to test uh, live and dead assessment. However, their use in 3D organoids and 3D cultures uh, is limited due to several issues. And unlike uh, single cells, uh, staining 3D structures may depend on several uh, factors or reasons. Now, reduced penetration of reagents to the center of these uh, 3D organoids is one of the major limitations we see. Uh, sometimes what happens, these kits are designed for single cells and it will only stay in the outermost layer of these 3D structures and they are unable to reach the center. So that's why we see some inconsistencies uh, in staining. Also, it could be a reason, uh, one, another reason could be the heterogeneity of cells because these organoids are made of uh, many different types of cells. So the staining may differ from one cell to another. Uh, and another reason is the effect of extracellular matrix, uh, the hydrogel, because we use hydrogels uh, to support the, these, uh, the growth of these organoids. Uh, unfortunately, these hydrogels sometimes produce background signal as well as the fluorescence, uh, kind of limiting their use in uh, such advanced uh, 3D uh, staining experiments. So here, the Well Bioscience, we produce a Cyto3D live dead assay kit to overcome these limitations. And as I mentioned, this is a one step uh, fast uh, procedure. No pre mixing is required and can be used in both 3D as well as uh, 2D cultures. And another important thing I would like to mention here uh, Cyto3D live dead assay kit can be used in both animal based uh, uh, hydrogel systems like Mitchell as well as. Uh, synthetic hydrogel systems like uh, vitrogel system. Now here we use uh, uh, two main uh, nuclear dyes. Acridine orange is one, which stains uh, uh, nucleated cells in green fluorescence, which will come under the GFP channel filter. Uh, and the propidium iodide uh, stains cells with compromised membranes. So this is where we, accept, uh, we try to differentiate live and dead cells. And dead cells will uh, uh, stain in red, fluorescence and will uh, appear under a Texas red uh, filter. So with that, I would like to quickly walk you through the methodology or the process of uh, uh, Cyto3D live dead assay kit. And as I mentioned, this is a very straightforward, fast method. Uh, once you bring uh, reagents to room temperature, you add two microliters of Cyto3D uh, reagent to every 100 uh, microliters of total volume. Now here you need, it's important to remember that you also have to consider the hydrogel volume in this uh, situation. Uh, for instance, if you use uh, uh, 50 microliters of hydrogel uh, with uh, 250 microliters of media, then you will consider it as 300 then at six microliters of uh, Cyto3D reagent. And then you can do a quick mix and uh, incubate your samples and reagent at 37 degree for about 10 minutes. Now time is important. Now, if you are using uh, smaller young organoids or spheroids, even five minutes would be enough uh, for uh, have a better staining. However, when you're using much larger mature organoid structures, maybe in long-term cultures, uh, it would be better to keep it for about 10 minutes to make sure all these reagents 
reach the center of these 3D structures. And then it is ready for cell viability detection uh, using a fluorescence microscope. All right, so from here onwards, I will go over some of the results we generated here using intestinal organoids and uh, cyto 3D live data assay kit. Uh, here you see a young uh, intestinal organoid uh, aged somewhere around 24 to 36 uh, hours. And uh, when we use cyto 3D, you can clearly uh, label live and dead cells. Uh, and uh, here at figure C, uh, image C, you can see the number of dead cells are uh, less because this is this organoid is at a rapid uh, growing stage and you have more dead, live cells compared to dead cells. However, when you're using a mature organoid like this here in figure A, uh, figure 2A, uh, which has some branching, you see a dense core, uh, you can use Cyto3D live dead as a kit to differentiate live and dead cells. Uh, and it provides much cleaner and better images without uh, background signal. And as I previously mentioned, um, uh, uh, background signal and inconsistency and staining, those are some of the major issues that we uh, see in such uh, uh, staining experiments. However, when you use uh, Cyto3D Live Data Assay Kit, you can avoid those limitations. And in figure two, D, E, F, those uh, images rep represent a mature organoid, which was cultured for about 30 to 40 days. Uh, and you can see uh, a lot of branches and you have, a, there is a dense core. Uh, yet uh, Cyto3D is able to uh, clearly recognize live and dead cells. Now, this is one of my favorite images uh, uh, to show how effectively we can use a Cyto3D kit to target uh, the tissue structures without any background signal. And um, here we have some more uh, uh, 3D constructed C stack videos to further show how well we can use uh, Cyto 3D in uh, organoid cultures. Uh, now, um, similar to, similarly in uh, organoid uh, 3D organoid cultures, we can use Cyto 3D in uh, spheroid cultures. Uh, here we have some examples. Um, now, in this uh, experiment, we use uh, uh, human IPS-derived steroid, which were grown in uh, vitro gel same system for about five days and stained with Cyto3D. The top uh, panel here shows live or healthy steroid, and the bottom uh, uh, four images uh, represent unhealthy dying uh, steroid, where you see more dead cells uh, uh, compared to the healthy one. And using Cyto3D, we are able to really understand what stage these uh, uh, spheroids are. Uh, here I have uh, more examples to show how effectively we can use a Cyto3D kit in long-term tumor cultures. Uh, we establish uh, here uh, an in vitro tumor model of human pancreatic spheroid ca uh, cancer cells. Uh, and uh, uh, these were mainly used for drug screening and testing purposes. And we use Cyto3D live data assay kit to identify the viability of these long-term uh, uh, tumor cultures. And here we have uh, MCF7 cells derived breast cancer tumors and the malignant stage of these spheroid continued even at day 35, where we use Cyto3D kit uh, to confirm uh, the viability of these uh, spheroid uh, tumors. So now uh, the use and the importance of uh, Cyto3D kit uh, actually go beyond just identifying live and dead cells. Uh, this kit can be used to sort organoid and spheroid. And this application of Cyto3D actually opens a whole new uh, branch of research. And also it shows the potential for organoid and uh, spheroid uh, automation. Uh, now this is a collaborative effect uh, with uh, Nodexers, where they introduced this new organoid spheroid uh, sorter NX1 Max, um, so which is a which is an ultra gentle benchtop sorter. Um, NX1 Max can process particles somewhere around 200, two to two hundred micrometers in diameter and can sort single or multiple particles per well. Uh, so like young organoids, spheroids, as well as bigger size cells like uh, cardiomyocyte, uh, adipocytes uh, can be sorted using uh, NX1 max. Now in this specific experiments, uh, we use 
both cyto 3 d live dead assay kit as well as NX1 Max to uh, separate live and dead spheroid uh, for further experiments. Um, now, um, first in this figure here, the pre sort uh, spheroids were stained with uh, cyto 3 d live dead assay kit, and we can clearly see how well it uh, stains live dead. Uh, yes, we have some dead cells as well in these. And during sorting, NX1 Max distinguished live and dead spheroids. This is the sorting gate where you have high green and low red. And uh, the machine is able to, uh, with the help of Cyto 3D, separate uh, dead or dying spheroids uh, where you have high red. And then we will have some debris, which this is something that we can uh, optimize. So the, uh, the most important thing Post uh, sorting, NX1 Max sorted single live spheroid per well, uh, and we were able to avoid all dying or dead particles, which would have a negative impact on our experiment. Now, with the help of Cyto 3D and uh, NX1 Max, uh, we are able to isolate most viable specimens. These are like uh, like per well low uh, or multiple uh, specimens. These type of experiments are increasingly popular among drug discovery and co-culture related studies. So, and also this enhances the reproducibility uh, in downstream applications. Uh, with that, I would also like to uh, talk about a little bit more on the use of Cyto 3 d live dead assay kit uh, in uh, drug discovery studies. I have, here I have some references. Uh, where the researchers use patient-derived uh, organoids, PDOs, uh, and Cyto3D kit uh, for screening. Now, in this first paper, Wong et al. Uh, explored the role of a newly identified uh, circular RNA RAT23D, uh, and then they demonstrated this uh, circular RNA RAT23B actually promotes ovarian cancer progression and increases uh, uh, carboplatin, which is a drug used in uh, these uh, cancer tumors, uh, resistance. Now, what they did, uh, they transfected uh, uh, ovarian cancer organoids with uh, lentivirus-driven um, uh, RAT23B to overexpress circular RNA. The, the results are shown here in figure A. And we can clearly see that when RAT23 is overexpressed, it promoted cancer progression, where you see more or high amount of green cells compared to uh, red or dead dying cells. And then to further confirm their findings, they use, uh, they inhibited the expression of uh, red 23 b using short hairpin RNA, and uh, which is indicated here at D, where you see more and more cells uh, entering the apoptotic state and uh, drug, drug sensitivity was increased and all these were confirmed by using Cyto 3D like dead as a kit. And the B and C images are the controls. Now, similar to that, uh, uh, another paper published in uh, Cell Death and Differentiation early this year from the same group, they investigated the novel role of uh, uh, ferroptosis suppressor protein, FSP1, in ovarian cancer. And they showed that uh, the inhibition of uh, FSP1 actually increase the drug sensitivity. And even, I'm not going to go into details, but they use Cyto3D live dead as a kit, even in this experiment to show uh, or confirm the cell viability in these experiments. So up to now, I explained uh, the application of uh, Cyto3D live dead as a kit, especially in organoid and uh, 3D uh, spheroid cultures. So here I'm going to switch gears and quickly walk you through uh, uh, some other examples or applications of Cyto 3D in both uh, 3D as well as uh, 2D cultures. All right, so similar to uh, in uh, 3D organoid and spheroid, uh, Cyto 3D live dead assay kit can be used in uh, uh, 3D cell culture, so which is an extremely popular area, and uh, they are used uh, in many applications uh, like. Uh, some uh, drug discovery and development, cancer research, stem cells, and many more. Now, in this case, we use uh, uh, cryoplasma cells uh, with 60% uh, viability. These are 
some brain cancer tumor cells, and uh, those were grown in vitro gel system. Uh, and we use Cyto 3D live dead assay kit to label uh, live and dead cells. And you can see how clear uh, images uh, that we can produce without uh, a much background uh, signal. Uh, another application uh, of Cyto 3D is in bioprinting. Uh, 3D bioprinting uh, is constantly evolving area uh, uh, where we use bio inks to kind of like generate 3D uh, tissue or 3D cell culture environment. Uh, and there are many applications associated with uh, 3D bioprinting, uh, like in, in personalized medicine, regenerative medicine, and many more. Now, in this specific experiment, uh, we use uh, human uh, iPS-derived uh, testicular cells, um, basically to study cell-to-cell -cell and cell-to-metric interaction. Uh, and we use four different types of uh, vitroings uh, based on the ligand, like C, G, E, F. We have used different ligands in these uh, vitro inks and compared to two controls, uh, laminin and natural fibrin. Uh, and the viability was examined after seven days in uh, culture using uh, a Cyto 3D uh, live dead assay kit. And we were able to uh, understand how well these different uh, vitro inks support uh, these uh, uh, cells uh, by looking at their viability uh, using Cyto 3D kit. Yeah, so with that, uh, here I have uh, uh, summarized uh, possible applications of uh, Cyto 3D live dead assay kit. We can clearly use them in uh, 3D organoids and ferroid cultures, also can be used in 3D cell culture, uh, long-term tumor ferroid cultures, as well as uh, invasion assays. Uh, last but not least, uh, uh, it can be used in uh, 3D bioprinting. Uh, and uh, now this would be my last uh, uh, application that I'm going to discuss. Uh, uh, of Cyto 3D. Uh, similar to in uh, 3D organoid and spheroid cultures, uh, Cyto 3D can be used in normal traditional uh, 2D uh, cell cultures. Uh, now, this example, we have used it in uh, 2D hydrogel uh, coating, uh, where we initially did a thin layer of uh, hydrogel and uh, human dermal fibroblast cells were then plated on that to give a better support and uh, interaction. Uh, and we use Cyto 3D live dead assay kit in these experiments to uh, test viability. The last one um, is uh, in cell counting. Now we know that uh, the gold standard uh, uh, in in vitro uh, experiments um, is to use uh, Tripon Blue, uh, but we can use Cyto 3D uh, live dead assay kit to count uh, or get the cell count and look at the number of uh, live versus dead cells. In this case, we use uh, Tripon Blue uh, with uh, MCF7 cells, uh, somewhere around 85 to 90 uh, cell viability. And we can see how closely or uh, the results are comparable between uh, these uh, two. Uh, now with that, uh, I'll come back to our final uh, key takeaways of today's uh, uh, webinar. As I mentioned uh, here at the Well Bioscience, uh, we developed Cyto 3D live dead assay kit specifically for labeling live and uh, dead cells in 3D tissue structures, including organoids and spheroid. And we can use uh, uh, Cyto 3D kit to avoid many limitations associated with uh, commercial kits. And it creates uniform staining without background noise, which will prov provide uh, much cleaner and better images with improved resolution. And uh, Cyto 3D Live Dead Assay Kit uh, uh, is a fast uh, one-step staining procedure. And as I explained, it has wider range of uh, 3D applications, uh, uh, applications in both the 3D and uh, 2D cell cultures. So with that, uh, I would like to wrap up today's uh, webinar uh, and uh, Thank you, everyone, once again, for joining uh, today's webinar. Over to Chris. Okay. Carl, oh, you can keep your uh, video back on. That's fine. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kahala, for your presentation. Uh, we will proceed with questions and answers, um, but keep coming up. Keep, keep uh, have the questions coming. 
Um, we do apologize for some that do not have the audio um, and that we will have the recording uh, and then we will send that out as well. Give me one moment, give me the questions here. Uh, let's see, yeah, we have one more poll and that would be um, that you can answer, uh, participate while we get the questions um, organized. Um, one of the first questions, um, Dr. Holler, is can Sanitary be like that assay be used in other matrices such as MatriGel? And can it be used for other applications other than hydrogel based 3D cell culture? Um, yes. So, uh, for the first question, uh, I think can, can it be used in uh, like MatriGel, right? Uh, Correct. So, uh, uh, Cyto 3D live data assay kit can be used in uh, uh, animal based. Uh, uh, hydrogel systems like uh, Metrogel, Caltrex. Yes, it is uh, developed for Vitrogel, but uh, uh, some of the data that I showed, those actually, those organoid cultures were grown in Metrogel. So you can use it and you can produce much cleaner and better uh, uh, results, images without uh, any background signal. And the second uh, uh, question, uh, uh, the applications other than uh, 3D, uh, there are many applications, as I explained, uh, uh, we can use Cycle 3 d uh, not just to identify live and dead cells, but in uh, spheroid organoid sorting. And also you can uh, uh, use it in normal 2D traditional cell culture as well as to do uh, cell counting. Okay, thank you. We have a lot more questions, but here's another one. Is the final washing step required when using the Cycle 3 d live dead assay kit with feature gel? No. So uh, when you use a Cyto 3D kit, you don't have to use a, a final washing step. Uh, you can directly edit uh, or mix it with the media uh, and uh, go for viability testing. However, uh, what I would say now, if you are using those uh, cells and 3D structures for long term uh, uh, culture, I would change the media and maybe you can do a quick uh, wash with the PBS and then you add uh, new media. That way you can get rid of any remaining uh, and will not be uh, interacting with your cells when you're doing long-term. But if you're doing just for cell vibe. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kahara, for your presentation. Uh, we will proceed with questions and answers. Um, keep uh, have the questions coming. Um, one of the first questions, um, Dr. Haller, is can sanitary be like that assay be used in other matrices such as matrigel? And can it be used for other applications other than hydrogel based 3D cell culture? Um, yes. So, uh, for the first question, uh, I think ca can it be used in uh, like matrigel, right? Uh, so, Cyto 3D live data assay kit can be used in uh, uh, animal based uh, uh, hydrogel systems like uh, matrigel, caltrex. Yes, it is uh, developed for vitrogel, but uh, uh, some of the data that I showed, those actually, those organoid cultures were grown in material. So you can use it and you can produce much cleaner and better results, images without uh, any background signal. And the second uh, uh, question, uh, uh, the applications other than uh, 3D, uh, there are many applications as I explained, uh, uh, we can use like a 3D, uh, not just to identify live and dead cells, but in uh, spheroid organoid sorting. And also you can uh, uh, use it in normal 2D traditional cell culture as well as to do uh, cell counting. We have a lot more questions, but here's another one. Is the final washing step required when using the Cyto 3D live dead assay kit with feature gel? No. So uh, when you use uh, Cyto 3D kit, you don't have to use a, a final washing step. Uh, you can directly edit uh, or mix it with the media and uh, go for viability testing. However, uh, what I would say now, if you are using those uh, cells and 3D structures for long-term culture, I would change the media and maybe you can do a quick uh, wash with the PBS and then you add uh, new media. That way you can get rid of any remaining uh, and will not be interacting with your cells when you are doing long-term. But if you are doing just for cell viability, you don't have to do a final washing step. Okay. Does the sanitary day lab that I say kit have any limitation between big structures? And do you have any recommendations, special recommendations for this type of assays? 
All right, so the limitations wise, like penetrating uh, 3D structures, no limitations. So that's one of the reasons why uh, we are uh, promoting this to say, this is specifically designed for uh, 3D structures and the reagents that we use can uh, penetrate well and uh, they are able to reach the center. So you will have a even staining across all the samples. But recommendation wise, I would say, based on the size, uh, the time that you incubate may vary. Uh, if you are using young, smaller spheroids and organoids, I would say smaller time, like five minutes would be enough. However, when you are using uh, mature organoids with dense structures, bigger size ones, I would keep them a little longer, about like 10 minutes, to make sure that all these cyto3D reagents are able to reach the center. So that would be the recommendation. And the temperature is also important, 37. Okay. I think this question also ties with that. The size is what is the diameter of the largest organoid spirit that can be labeled by Cyto3D? Okay. So I think uh, you can normally organoid uh, what we have for sure confirm uh, uh, somewhere around 400 uh, uh, micrometer size can be done. We have done most intestinal organoids uh, somewhere around uh, 100 to uh, 400, I would say. Uh, but uh, if you have a larger one, if you see some uh, differences in staining, I would uh, increase the time a little bit uh, to get a better result. So I would say, yeah, up to 500 to 400 micrometer size uh, organoids can be stained. Okay. Would Cyto3D generate stable signal during multi-week live dead 3D cell culture? Yes, it will. Now, uh, as uh, now this is, uh, we use uh, acridine orange and uh, uh, propidium iodide. So they will degrade over time because of uh, 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 photocatalytic effect. Uh, but it should be good for about, I would say, uh, when, it, when it is exposed to a visible light, it will start degrading. But it will last for about, I would say, 160 minutes. Uh, like the good uh, intensity. However, it could last till 48 hours, I would say, but over time it will degrade. Okay. Does the kit recognize all the dead cells or only the apoptotic ones? So all the dead cells, because uh, now the, the, the principle we use here is the membrane permeability. So if uh, the membrane is compromised, uh, PI would be able to enter and that will start uh, labeling them. And how do you set a cutoff to differentiate, differentiate organoids with some dying cells from a dead organoid? So it's a difficult question. Now, you know, organoids are made of many different cells and the, these cells will be at different stages of their life cycle. So now one, one cutoff that we like, for example, if you are using younger organoids, I would say you can clearly see the much higher population of live cells, and then you will have some dead cells. But when the organoid is growing, it will start like, uh, for instance, in intestinal organoids, they will start releasing these dead cells into the core if you are growing them in metrigel. So you will see some dead cells there but majority of other cells will be still alive. And especially when you are using, uh, I think I can, if I, if I go back to my presentation, uh, how to identify like uh, the stage is basically now in this uh, video here. Yeah, so here you can see, can you, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, so in this, uh, like there are some dying or already dead organoids. But with Cyto3D, you can see you have mostly red staining there. So that would be an indication to say, okay, this is all, or maybe dead or dying organoid compared to the rest. You can see you have more green. But when you culture over time, obviously you will have both green and red. Uh, if you see green color, that would be an indication to say, okay, these organoids are still alive. A nice slide to be on. Uh, but any case, another one is the, uh, what is the advantage of the kit compared to a classical staining PI and IO? Uh, I guess they're asking is it why, why the kit instead of buying a single dye? Yeah, so now this is, as I previously mentioned, uh, uh, 
we have specifically designed uh, this uh, cocktail, I would say, to make sure that it uh, provides you much better, cleaner uh, result without background uh, signal. And yes, you can buy single ones and then you can mix, but this is already made together. So pre-mixing is not required. So you can uh, kind of, we have optimized this, so you don't have to, you can get rid of like time that you have to spend on optimizing uh, and uh, pre-mixing. Uh, so those are some of the advantages using this kit because it's already mixed, no pre-mixing is required. And the way that we have designed to make sure that it won't produce background signals, especially when you're using uh, uh, hydrogel systems uh, like metrogel or animal based uh, metrogel or synthetic hydrogel like uh, vitrogel. Okay. We have a lot more questions, which is great. Uh, thank you for all the questions. We have a few more. Um, can the sample organoid continue to be used for following steps after staining with viability kit? Yeah, that's a good question. Now, so these are intercatalating agents. So they will bind with the nucleic acid in the nucleus of the cell. So I would say if you are planning to continue these, I would change media for sure and maybe do an extra washing step because there is a chance that they might interact with the, the nucleic acid. Best, if you are just using it for uh, cell viability, you don't have to change media, but uh, we have done, we have stained organoids with Cyto3D and we remove media, we change to new media and we cultured them over time. Morphologically, we have not seen significant differences. So because of that, I can say, yes, you can use, but at the same time, there is a risk that it might uh, induce some changes in DNA because they, they bind to DNA, there is a chance. So that's why I would recommend changing media and maybe followed by a washing step as well. Um, another question is, does Cytotrid binds to DNA? That's what they're saying. Does that mean it is toxic to the cells for long-term exposure? It might be, yes. So if you are using, if you're using same set of cells, and if you are planning to do uh, like uh, continuous staining, like a uh, few day uh, intervals, I would always, uh, because it, it, it will stain, especially if you are doing uh, 3D cells and organoids. Uh, once you incubate for uh, five to 10 minutes, you check the viability and change it uh, with new uh, media. But in the long run, there is a chance, but I would say it's minimum, as I mentioned, uh, we have tested, what we have seen is very limited, the changes, so, yeah. Okay. There is another question, I probably tied with the previous one, but uh, they say, thank you for the reply. The human liver slices are floating in the medium, not embedded in hydrogel. Is the kit still okay for this application? Yes, you can still use it, yes. Perfect. How long, did we ever go to this question, how long did fluorescence last? Yes, so fluorescence lasts for about 48 hours, but it will start degrading. Uh, I would say around like after two days, you should see mostly it should go away. But the best results you can uh, get in first uh, few, I would say one hour or so. Okay. And this goes part into the, the performance. How does a Cyto3D lab that acid kit ensures uniform staining across 3D structures like organoids and spheroids? So again, uh, so this one, um, the way that we design uh, or the produ uh, develop this uh, kit to make sure that it uh, enters and goes out uh, pretty fast uh, through this hydrogel system. Uh, that way uh, we make sure it only targets uh, the 3D structure uh, without no remaining on the hydrogel system, which will kind of like produce some background signal. Okay. Can you go a little bit about on um, how to elaborate, uh, how to, how SATA 3D uh, lab data acid kit can be applied to long-term 3D tumor spheroid cultures and what benefits it offers for researchers conducting drug discovery studies in the system? Uh, yes, so now, uh, yeah, as I explained in one of my slides, uh, uh, the site of 3D live data assay kit uh, uh, can be for sure used for long-term uh, spheroid or tumor cultures. Um, so that will really help uh, you to see whether the cells are still viable 
And at the same time, if you are planning to do any drug related uh, or drug treatments uh, while doing other experiments to see, check uh, cell viability, uh, Cyto3D would provide you an added advantage of producing uh, much nicer and better uh, images, maybe for your publication or your presentations. Uh, so those are uh, some of the benefits I would say uh, that you can get out of this kit using in long-term uh, cancer research. Okay. Also, will the Cyto3D uh, affect cell growth if repeatedly labeling cells for multiple times? Yes, there is a chance. Uh, so best uh, if you are planning to uh, continue using those cultured cells, so 3D organoids, I would go for a, a washing step. Uh, remove, uh, uh, once you are done with imaging, remove the media and then maybe wash with PBS and then uh, start uh, with the new, brand new uh, media. I want to see if we have any more questions to the audience. Um, I don't see any more. So thank you, Dr. Akahara, and thank you everyone for continued support for this webinar. As you can see, please follow us you know, on the web website on LinkedIn or visit our website uh, for more about our hydro products and various 3D cell culture applications, protocols, scientific resources, uh, publications, and future webinars. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. See you in future webinars. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.